Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Now, I have set myself a grand goal that during this series, I will deliver a Kerbal to the surface of Eve and return them safely to the planet Kerbin. I choose to go to Eve. I choose to go to the Eve in this series and do other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of my energies and skills, because that challenge is one that I am willing to accept, one I am unwilling to postpone, and one which I intend to win and the others too. But seriously, we are going to Eve. I did this a long, long time ago, back in version 0.17, when things were different. In particular, the aero spikes had much better thrust to weight ratio, and I used a whole bunch of those. I also used the biggest rocket I had ever built. It was so large that the physics engine wanted to run at one frame per second, and I had to actually run cheat engine on the system to reduce the clock so that the physics engine would run slowly or quickly enough and let the rocket take off without disintegrating due to flaws in the physics system. Now we have lags bay and that shouldn't be a problem, but I want to do a smaller and more efficient rocket. And that is why this first mission is actually a set of probes that are going to go to EVE and get me information. Okay, I could have just gone and looked it up in the, you know, on the wiki, but damn it, I want to go out and test this. Anyway, this probe has a couple of uh, custom parts. Obviously, one custom part is the procedural fairings, which I have just ditched. Uh, but there is also going to be the ISA map sat. You can see it attached to the side of the rocket that was hidden nicely inside the fairing there. But now it is, well, it is currently idle, I guess. But anyway, we have ourselves a... Uh, well, we have ourselves a burn set up already that will bring us to Eve if we uh, make an inclination change burn halfway through. It was 1000 meters per second. I think I have about 1800 in that. Of course, the main booster does not make the rest of the trip, but uh, I thought it was nice to watch it, you know, disintegrate, descend into the atmosphere, burn up, all that other things. It's kind of nice to clear up space. Presumably the the fairings were going to go that way as well, but, you know, who wants to watch them falling when you've got a giant booster? Anyway, off we go into deep space with our spacecraft. There's the moon, and you can just see Minmus. Just, yeah, okay, you can probably see it there. <laughs> I knew it was there somewhere. Yes, heading off into deep space. Now we got to plan our maneuver for halfway through the cycle, through this transfer. It just happens that the node is more or less halfway there. The It's mostly going to be a plane change, but there were, to get the encounter as close as possible, we do a little bit of retrograde burn. We want to obviously get as close as we can to EVE so that we can then make further adjustments to our trajectory. We want to come in over the poles because one of the spacecraft is a mapping satellite. The other spacecraft doesn't have any any uh, preference as for its inclination because it's going to land. Anyway, um, yeah, we fly around through this. Tr through this, uh, I kind of pointed the spacecraft at Eve. I was wanting to see how early I could catch it, but you know, spinning the camera around, actually trying to see it, but to no avail. I'm sure if I, I if I was sitting in a cockpit, I could actually look out and see this thing. You would be amazed at the level of zoom you can get from a Kerbal sitting in a cockpit. You can see, you know, you can see Jewel from the surface of Kerbin if you know where to look. But yes, we have this small maneuver burning up another 372 meters per second. I think this main interplanetary stage will give me something like 1800. I'm not exactly sure on that, but uh you know, there are engines on the other spacecraft, we just don't want to do them. We, do, we don't want to use them. What we're going to do is get ourselves into an inclined eccentric orbit and then let the... do some aero braking. We'll do aero capture and then aero braking. But um, until then, we, we actually need to cruise through deep space. And I kind of took a look at this and I thought, that's just about right. Now, I set the thing up again, looking for time except, you know, looking for Eve. And as I come in close to the sun, I actually catch sight of it here. Now, if you've got this in HD, you might just be able to see Eve. It's there where the mouse is pointing. It's really, really tiny, but it is there. 
Um, yeah, right in that little circle there. Obviously, it's going to pass in front of the sun. We're not going to see it. But uh, if we continue, it, cut, it becomes more obvious as we come out the other side. You see, you can see it now. It doesn't matter if maybe in 720p it's visible. Who knows? Maybe 480p it's visible. Regardless, we're getting in close and we need to adjust our trajectory to make sure that we are looking good. And actually, looking at that a little closer, it looks like I'm on the, exactly the orbit I want. Coming over the south, or coming under the south pole, you can see that my orbit is getting deflected upwards. Having moved into the sphere of influence, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm going to make a small change to make it as close to the pole as possible because we're going to be mapping the mapping the poles or mapping the planet using this. The idea behind mapping the planet is we want to find large, high altitude areas that are flat because the atmosphere is so darn thick that if you land at sea level, you need a lot more delta V to get into space. Now, we're going to measure exactly how much, or we're going to guesstimate how much, just by examining the this probe's flight characteristics. One of the probes is going to land with an engine, and we're going to fly it around and just see how thick the atmosphere is, and how fast we can expect to go. But uh, what we've done is we've set ourselves up for aerobraking at 70 kilometers, so what we're going to do is fold in the fold in the um, solar panels, because we don't want those blowing off. Uh, we should probably have had like a heat shield or something on this to really, you know, fit the part. But you know, I guess we're just going to have to make use of the main. Uh, we're going to use that engine as our heat shield. The it's kind of it's um it's deceptive how much fuel we have because of course there's a couple of tanks on in each of those probes and that liquid fuel value there includes the things on that. But yeah, so seventy kilometers is a good value for a first. Uh, aero capture maneuver around Eve, that should get you, should get you into a captured orbit, but it shouldn't slam you into the planet, which is obviously something you're trying to avoid if you're putting a space probe into orbit. Um, so there we go. You can see the orbit is already distorting around the planet here, moving at four thousand six hundred and change, basically meters per second. That is quite significant. And uh, obviously we're going to have to be going that fast to escape at some point. But right now we are just trying to figure out... We're just we're going to collect this data. And then we're going to build a rocket based on the data we have. I overbuilt the last one by quite a lot. And you saw that not only was it able to get into orbit, it was able to go home. Well now, since then, we have had docking, right? So we are going to have the ability to refuel our spacecraft in space. We don't need to launch it all at once. Now, we probably can't build a giant asparagus staged monster using docking, so we still need to figure out how to get that into orbit, but everything should mostly work. <laughs> anyway, it looks like we've come through our aero braking maneuver. We're starting to get higher and higher, uh, sliding back into orbit. Uh, the orbit is still coming down, but it'll probably stop around you know above 10,000 10, kilometers, which is good. Once we are through the atmosphere, what we'll do is we'll actually raise our periaps over so that we're not biting so far down into the atmosphere. We'll probably raise it above like 80 something. So we just skim through the atmosphere multiple times until we circularize the orbit. I'm trying to use as little fuel as possible because I know that uh, this main stage will run out soon. I do want to leave it on an orbit where it will decay eventually, but that will, you know, that's... That's optional, really. <laughs> I'm not likely to hit my main stage just yet. We're a long way from having to deal with Kessler syndrome around the planet Eve. And anyway, here we go. So, total of 1.9 meters per second, and that raises our periaps up. And so we're just going to burn, or not we're going to burn, we're going to skim around the atmosphere, probably not even low enough to get the shock heating going on. And over multiple orbits, it will slowly circularize this highly eccentric orbit. That's what aerobraking is actually really good at, is circularizing orbits. We, we do aerobraking around Mars because the th atmosphere is very thin. We don't tend to do aero capture because to capture something from an interplanetary trajectory and get it into a uh, you know, locked orbit or a captured orbit around Mars is actually pretty hard on the spacecraft. You have to go pretty deep into the 
into the atmosphere and so it tends to be considered to be safer to do it you know capture with the engine and then multiple aero braking cycles to slow it down anyway after a while we get ourselves our peri apps or apo apps down below about 450 so at this point we separate the three components of the spacecraft this is the mapping satellite it is going to go into orbit the boost engine the interplanetary engine is going to fall back to the planet's surface so uh, yeah this is the isa mapsat or this mapping satellite as i said it has isa mapsat installed which is not an easy thing to do right now because it hasn't really been supported for a long time the mod dll works but you can't install it in the game data directory uh, and you need to manually edit the part files Anyway, this part remains on the same orbit as the um, the interplanetary stage. This is going to come down and land on the surface, but before it lands, we're going to do some other aerodynamic experiments. We have a parachute there, so we're going to be able to land it whatever, but we also have a fairly capable engine on it. Right now, with uh, you know this fuel-to-mass ratio, or this thrust-to-mass ratio, we can accelerate at about 2.5 Gs, which is pretty good and we're going to actually we're going to fly it around to see how my rockets will perform in the atmosphere so i want to see how fast they fly and you know, therefore make a guesstimate for how long my engines will have to burn at 2.5 g's if i'm going to get high enough to uh, essentially get above the atmosphere and then boost into orbit without the atmosphere slowing me down nearly so much so i'm actually I mean, I haven't got any data logging or anything on this. If you want to do proper data logging, you can use the Telemachus uh, interface. That's a really nice thing that lets you log stuff to disk or generate really nice gra graphs using uh, web browsers and stuff. I literally am going to be looking at this video and you know, looking at the gauges and seeing that 30 kilometers, the atmosphere is roughly the same that we get at 10 kilometers. So I have to get 30 kilometers up before I can even think about starting a proper burn to orbit. Anyway, we're falling down. You can see that um, 16, well, let's see how high we go before, or how deep we have to go before we get down to one atmosphere. And it looks like about 10 kilometers up, we're down to the same atmospheric pressure as Kerbin. Or atmospheric density because that gauge actually is all about density rather than pressure uh, if you look at the way the aerodynamics handles so we're getting low enough uh, at around four kilometers I'm gonna fire up this engine and then we're gonna fly sideways and just see how fast I actually fly against this super thick atmosphere because if we can fly from about four kilometers that's great that will save us you know four kilometers of really thick atmosphere so all I'm going to do is fly sideways and look roughly at the velocity I'm traveling at. And so we're going to use these values, so about 85, and you know, subtract a bit off of that for gravity. I would say that I have to be able to travel at about 70 meters per second is probably what I'll manage in a rocket, right? 70 meters per second. So I have to go from, you know, whatever my starting altitude is up to... 30 kilometers at about you know 70 meters per second and therefore I'm gonna get how big a rocket I actually need to cover that distance and then from that point it's actually pretty easy to figure out you know how much I actually need to get into orbit I'm thinking it'll probably be about 10 kilometers per second mostly because 10 is a nice round number right <laughs> unless you think in binary in which case it's a very odd number if you think in binary, eight kilometers, eight eight thousand one hundred ninety-two is probably a good one. Anyway, on to the surface. This probe's journey is largely complete. Now I'm thinking, why didn't I just put wheels on that and then I could have driven about? Oh well, never mind. We're back in orbit and it's time to start mapping. And yes, you see, it says no terrain detected. Um, it got a little confused and you have to turn things on and off but if I turn on map drawing it does actually start drawing the map uh, I click on stuff randomly but yes you see that little blob of blue right there and in, in the top right corner of the the circle that is our map being drawn and so from this map we are gonna we're dumping the raw data we are gonna process produce a map and look for a place on the surface 
where I can land hopefully high enough that it's above most of the atmosphere and not on a slope and also wide enough that it's easy to hit using parachutes. So that's the plan. Next, next episode, I'm going to do some research and then we're going to figure out exactly what we're going to fly. And then we're actually going to fly the darn thing and that's going to include a lot of refueling. But until then, I am Scott Manley. Fly safe.